This tutorial is part of our YouTube playlist, TriFlask API Development. So you can watch this course from the start if you prefer. Now, alternatively, if you enjoy this course, you can also purchase this course on Udemy, where you'll find deeper content, source code, and course updates. Links to both the playlist and Udemy course can be found in the video description. If you have watched the setup guides, the Python setup guides, then you would have installed some extensions within Visual Studio Code. So we're just going to set up a project level settings for our project so that we can define how we want these extensions to behave within our project. So I do have Python installed. That's the first extension. So if you're new to extensions, go over to the extensions tab, just type in Python, install Python, make sure it's the Microsoft version with the blue tick. So that's the first thing. And then the second extension to install is rough. So that's going to give us linting and formatting support. We'll see that in action shortly. And then I do have Night Owl, so that's the theme that I'm using for this Visual Studio Code um, application. So that's just the theme. And that's pretty much it. So these are other apps here just for different projects that I run. To define project level settings in Visual Studio Code, we we'll go ahead and create a new folder, VMV folder, a .vemv folder. What am I talking about? I've got VEMV on the brain. Apologies. Sorry, dot Visual Studio Code, because it's got a V in it. Okay, so dot VS Code, I'll slow down a bit. All right, so inside of here, we're going to create a new file called settings dot, not pi, settings dot JSON. There we go. Okay, so that's our JSON file. So inside of here, we're going to find define some settings, which is going to be applied to this project. So this is only going to be working within this project because we've defined a new folder here for this project specifically to um, manage the behavior of some of our extensions. So what we're gonna do here is first of all, define some Python behavior. So when we're working with the Python programming language, Visual Studio Code is going to detect that we're working with Python programming language in our pages, in our files, and therefore it's going to apply these settings. So, First up, let's uh, set the editor uh, dot format on save. Right, so what we want to do here then is we want to make sure that when we press save, the page is going to be formatted for us automatically. If you're not familiar with formatting, formatting in programming refers to the process of arranging and structuring your code according to specific guidelines and conventions. So we have installed rough which is going to perform this type of functionality. It's going to arrange and structure our code. And by doing that, it does add um, or enhance our code. It makes it more readable, consistent. And this is all done in, a, in an automated way. So all we need to do at this point is just press save and then Ruff will go ahead and actually then format our code. So we'll see that in action through our project. And I'll, I'll make sure I point that out uh, in, but we don't necessarily need to do anything other than turn it on and our code will be nicely formatted for us when we press save. Now, if you're not familiar with formatting, it might seem quite trivial to set that up, but it is a really powerful tool and it just means that your code looks really nice ultimately, um, but it is consistently formatted, consistently presented. So let's go for code actions um, on save. Because in addition to actually um, saving or formatting our code, we want to perform some additional or have some additional settings to find. So this should be editor.code on save. So what we want to do here is now define a few things. So what we can do is if we make mistakes within our code, we can ask Ruff to actually maybe remove or try to fix them. So we have source.fixall and we make that explicit, which means that Ruff will always try to fix those problems. So that might be changing some code within our application. Now, that might be a setting that you turn off eventually as you become more comfortable with code because it might, or it has the potential to um, remove something that can be quite relevant. And I'll show you an example of that as we work through the application. 
But that's what that setting is going to do, is Ruff is going to try and fix any issues it sees within our code. Because Ruff is also not only just a, a formatting tool, but it is also a linting tool. So a linting tool referring to a, a tool which analyzes the code and looks for errors in our code. So what it also does, or what we can also do is um, organize imports. So we've already seen an example of an import at the top of our code in our simple example. So eventually we're going to have multiple imports and it can get quite um, hectic at the top of our page. So Ruff is going to organize our imports and it does that in a few different ways. It will organize the imports um, by categorizing the different types of imports. And again, that might seem a very simple or uh, trivial type of thing to do, but when you're reading code, um, it can be quite useful to have that type of structured approach. Either way, just turn it on and leave it and we're good to go. Right, so let's just end that there. And now we're just going to set the editor edit or dot default. Okay, that should be a default formatter. So we need to actually specify our default formatter and that's going to be rough, which is called Charlie Marsh dot rough. Okay, so it looks like that. Uh, so let's finish that there. And then, oh, that's not quite right. So, yep, let's finish that there. And let's go ahead now and set editor. I've got too many uh, brackets here. Uh, let's set the editor dot rule it, or rule is, sorry. So this is referring to a line length. So what we're gonna do is, well, in actual fact, rough utilizes a line length of 88. Now line length in Python um, is just something that we utilize to ensure that we don't have any really long lines of code because it can be really difficult. You imagine if you're reading this code, uh, let's go back to our Hello Pi, and you know our code stretches over to the right-hand side. And once you start seeing code that's got thousands of lines, it can be quite frustrating to move across when you need to and come back. So we're going to set a line length. Um, ruler so we can see where the line length ends and what rough is going to do it's going to format our code for us anyway so it doesn't go above 88 characters so 88 characters from the left to the right that's going to be our maximum line length for our code so we're just creating a ruler we'll see that shortly now let's just make sure that this is right so I don't think I need that there um, so I press save okay so that's all the settings that we're going to apply and now I can't see the ruler yet. If I zoom out a bit, you can see it right there now in the middle here. So that's the ruler that defines the line length. So what if I do, if I do this, so inside of the hello, I'm just gonna add some random text. Okay, so ooh, not quite far. So I press save there, say so nothing is happening, I'm pressing save. If I add a few more lines and press save, you can see that again, nothing is happening because this isn't Python code. So that isn't being formatted correctly. So that was kind of a waste of time showing you that. Apologies. So let me bring that back in. So let's do that again. Let's extend the path here. Okay, so keep extending the path. Uh, so I press save and notice that it broke to the next line. So if I press save here, you notice it doesn't go to the next line. It isn't formatted to the next line. But if I go over that line, which is our line length and press uh, save, you can see it breaks to make sure that we don't exceed the line length. So I can continue and you can see this time it doesn't actually do that this time. So we would need to format it manually. But you can see that was a, a basic example of the fact that if we go past that line length, then the formatter in this case, Rough will try to then go ahead and format our code. So our code doesn't exceed the maximum line length. Now throughout this project, we are going to see certain errors occur we will find that, let's just uh, see if we can make one up. So you can see the red squig squiggly underline there. So notice here that Ruff has identified that there's a problem. Um, so we're told the unidentified name, so that doesn't exist. Uh, so if I press save, you can see nothing happens there. Um, so we weren't able to fix it. However, if I press delete, Obviously that fixes the problem, but it identifies where potential problems are. So this is what a, a linting tool will provide. 
ultimately, it's going to be up to you whether you utilize these extensions. Do remember that if you do want to use Rough, I believe you will need to install Python first, the extension Python here first, because that provides, I think, like a baseline for other extensions to work with Visual Studio Code. So install Python first and then Rough. Now, Python does, in addition to that, install something called PyLance, but we aren't necessarily going to be focused on that. But it does also provide linting, like you saw in the example previously. Um, it was able to find the same um, issue that Rough did. Okay, so what we have now then is a setup so that when we press save, the Rough formatter will try to format our code, structure our code. We have our um, line on the page so we can see if we're going near the end of the line or the maximum line length for our code. And we have a setup so that a rough might try to fix any errors. Now I can give you an example of that. Let's just um, import OS. So we're not actually using this import. So it's identified here by rough that we're not actually using it. So if I press save, it will actually remove it for us. So that's just an example of that um, source.pixel working. And then we've also seen organize imports. So if I were to import, um, no, it's not gonna be, I won't be able to demonstrate that just yet, but it will organize our imports. If I press save there, notice that all the code is pushed to the top of the screen to organize the imports and our code on the page. So if I do that and press enter, you can see that um, the formatting tool knows that there should ideally be two lines, the general convention, two lines there of space. So therefore it performs that action. So if I try to make a break here and press save, you can see that the formatter is defined, defining that our code should be next to the, uh, the previous code here, our, our declarator um, definition here. So that's what's happened. Okay, so although it would be impossible at this stage to give you a full overview of all and everything that Rough will provide as a formatter and linting tool, hopefully you're starting to see some of the benefits uh, of utilizing this tool to help structure and format our code, as well as providing us some details about some potential errors in our code. So this is going to be our settings for this project. Now, if you're interested in setting this at a more global, in a more global way, to the Visual Studio Code editor, then do check out our Python setup guides.